one. Ladies and gentlemen, next in the program is our second plenary session. Once again, a gentle reminder, kindly post your comments and questions in the chat box for the speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our second plenary speaker, we are indeed privileged to have Mr. Christopher Graham with us this lovely afternoon. Mr. Graham holds a degree in politics from Warwick University, Cambridge Delta, and is a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. He is currently an ELT consultant and writer and has worked in the field since 1981 in over 30 countries for the British Council, ministries of education, as well as publishers. In 2020, his projects have included working on approaches to the digital provision of ELT during COVID-19 in fragile locations and delivering a large scale professional development program online for the British Council. He is currently one of the founders of ELT Footprint, Footprint a 2020 Elton winner. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, let us welcome Mr. Christopher Graham with his presentation titled 21st Century Skills Integration, Benefits and Challenges. Mr. Graham, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, good morning, or wherever you are. It's morning here in, in the UK in sunny London. And uh, my name is Chris Graham, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about 21st century skills and particularly looking at one or two of the challenges that, 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 that we may face when we try to integrate 21st century skills into our English language classes. Um, here's a bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about in the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, just a quick reminder of what 21st century skills are, but perhaps more importantly, why we should uh, why we should consider integrating them into our classes. And I'm going to look at two challenges or two issues. Um, the first one is about assessment, how we can assess, how we can measure performance around 21st century skills in our classes. And the second uh, issue area is that of some of the cultural, political, or educational challenges that we can face with 21st century skills. Um, here's a gentle reminder. Um, I'm sure many of you know uh, something of 21st century skills. You may have them in, in course books you use or you may have, have, have uh, encountered them in professional development sessions or talks you've been to. Um, this framework here is, is quite complex, but I'm simply going to focus on the orange part at the top of the curve, the famous four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration and creativity. The reason I'm focusing on them rather than on the others there is that they are the ones that most commonly occur in English in the English language teaching context in our course books and in our classes. So the four C's are the ones that we perhaps are likely to be most familiar with. But of course, the others are important, particularly, I think, information, media and technology skills especially in, 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 in the days of uh, the days of COVID perhaps where more people are working online, more people are, are using online resources as sources of information, sources of, for research projects, for, 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 for their teaching. Um, some understanding of the issues around that uh, is really important but as I say my focus today is particularly on, on the four C's, critical thinking, communication, collaboration and creativity. <coughs> you can easily um, the, the, the find, if, if you want to download that framework, you can download it from Battelle for Kids, which the references is at the, is at the bottom there. They were formerly known as, as P21, that organization. It's an American education organization, but it's, it's a nice framework. And on the website, there's an expansion of all the points there to get a little bit more detail for you. So why should we integrate 21st century skills what, what's the point well it seems to me it's 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 motivating for students uh study opportunities are enhanced for university requirements around research projects around writing essays around taking part in seminars all of those employ 21st century skills um of course employers job finding seeking employment 21st century skills are very uh, very aligned, let's say, with, 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 with a modern workplace. Um, and the digital world, um, we, as, as I mentioned before, more and more of us have been spending more and more time online uh, as, as a result of COVID and for our, our daily work. So the, the ability to, 
to look at information online with a critical eye is, 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 a, is a useful one, I think, for, 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 for students of all ages. And finally, I put on the bottom there, um, there are more and more crises in the world at the moment. It seems to be, seems to be getting worse. We have the climate emergency, we have COVID-19. There's a lot of things to worry about. Critical, th uh, critical thinking, communication skills, collaboration skills are needed more than ever, I think, in the 21st century world. So I think they're very important things that we can integrate into our activities for, uh, for our students to, uh, to try out, to become familiar with and ultimately to put into practice. The first issue, as I said, is that of assessment. A couple of questions to think about. Should we assess 21st century skills at all? I mean, it's not strictly always part of what we teach. We're English teachers. Of course, we need to assess progress in English, the ability to communicate in English. We do that arguably in every lesson, every week on a regular basis. We're assessing, we're measuring. Have they got it? Do we need to go back? Do we need to look at it again? Now, that's fine. We can move on. We all do this all the time in our minds. Um, 21st century skills? Not so much. They're not always in our lessons. And anyway, should we be trying to assess them? And related to that is the second question. Should we assess 21st century skills as, as they are or as part of the language process? Um, maybe we should think about assessing language on one side and assessing 21st century skills on the other side. I don't know. It's an interesting question, something that we need to consider if we think we're going to assess them at all. Um, so the arguments, the arguments for assessing 21st century skills say that it makes them uh, more credible, gives value to them. I've got a certificate, I've got a grade um, and students respond to that. It's, it's, it's more motivating for students, more stimulating for students if they're assessed. And ultimately, it makes them appear more serious. Students will often think, well, well, if, if there's no test, if there's no certificate, this isn't a serious thing. No, 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 I don't need to think about this. So it makes it seem more serious. So those are two arguments for assessment. And equally, um, formative assessment, you know, as assessing for our benefit as, 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 as teachers to understand what students have understood, what they haven't, what they need to develop, what they're okay with. Um, formative assessment of 21st century schools will help us to develop our teaching strategy um, to support students as, as it does with, with, with English teaching. How can we teach English if we're not using formative assessment, if we don't have some understanding of the advances that students are making or not, which allows us to, to, to gauge our teaching and, and adjust our teaching. So maybe it's the same for 21st century skills. And it motivates particularly in more exam driven cultures, students like to be tested. It's a habit. We want an exam on, in this. We want to be tested in it. We want a certificate. We want to know we got a grade. So yeah, th that's an argument probably for it. However, there are counter arguments. No to assessment of 21st century skills. Uh, one argument is that many of the 21st century skills are linked to personality or character. For example, communication skills often require standing up, maybe speaking to a group of a small group of people, speaking to the whole class, uh, doing what I'm doing now, taking part in online meetings. And the challenges around that and the measures of success are perhaps as much around personality or character as much as they are around the skills. Not everybody is able to stand up in front of a group of people and speak in, in any language, in their own language. They just can't do it because of their character. It's not a criticism, it's just a fact. So maybe it's unfair, therefore, to try and measure that. Um, and anyway, do we as language teachers have the tools to assess 21st century skills in any meaningful way? Possibly not. We, we, we're not bad at assessing language. We're not great at it, but we're not bad at it. We have a lot of practice at doing it. Um, 21st century skills? Maybe less. And as I say, um, character, personality, self-confidence, these things are very much part of many of the 21st century skills, and they're actually nothing to do with language. As I say, um, some people would not be able to speak to a meeting of, of 300 colleagues in their first language or in English, because it's nothing to do with the language, it's to do with their character. Um, so sometimes it's, it's questionable whether we're able to, whether it's even desirable to assess 21st century skills. Um, 
and it's complicated because we have some that are 21st century skills that are language specific and language dependent and some that are not for example problem solving is a very very common part of 21st century skills activity students collaborating together in a group to find a solution to a problem now do they find that solution because of their english or do they find that solution because of their 21st century skills is it a combination of the two are we seeing 21st century skills in action when they actually change out of english into their home language and start talking about the problem they're still using 21st century skills they're just not using english so they're very mixed up so it's difficult to separate them forensically to be able to measure them and as i say at the bottom there a student with a poor level a low level of english maybe the most active in a collaboration gesturing really positive what do you think really active okay i understand i understand their language level may be low but the 21st century skills if you wish are of a high level because of their character so that makes assessment absurdly complicated especially as we are essentially english teachers that's that's the job that we're paid to do so it's a very complicated thing and we have also to think about and this is important i think 21st century skills are appearing on the back of there's loads of books behind me lots of it, those books are english language course books and on the back of those course books it very commonly says 21st century skills and what worries me about that is that success in english is very closely connected now tied up with 21st century skills and students who are shy less confident who don't feel able to speak out publicly to to collaborate easily in groups um may feel socially anxious students as i call them there may feel left out and may feel they're they're losing their position in the class so it's it's, it's something we need to be very careful about actually and another issue is if we do decide to assess 21st century skills how do we benchmark them how do we grade them uh because in my opinion the way people use or not 21st century skills are very often products of their home culture they're transferable from their home environment so it's very hard to to compare i say some malaysian students with some students from sweden because the home cultures the learning cultures the way that, that the discourse that people have the way people work together in groups are different in those two countries and we're trying to compare them so what benchmarks do we have it's very concerning i think and here's an interesting quote here the references by the way are, are on the final slide um i say some skills can't be easily measured in quantitative terms how do you measure collaboration and I can measure English ability. I can say this person is C1, this person is B2. I can kind of do that. But how do I measure collaboration? How do I measure innovation? It's very hard to do. So what can we assess? Well, it, we can assess some things, in my opinion. It seems we can assess the process that students go through or the result. And I think the process is, is the important part. I remember when I was, 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 was learning mathematics at school, I was actually very bad at mathematics, but I remember the teacher would ask us to show our workings, to show the calculations, because for the teacher, it was as important the process that we went through in the maths as the result was. We might actually get the wrong answer, but we used a good process and you could see, oh, that's where they went wrong. That's why they got the wrong answer. But generally the process was good. And so I, I think, looking at the process of collaboration let's look so he spoke he made sure that she spoke they evaluated they weighed up they compared that's interesting the process was very sound the result maybe is less important because in many cases in these 21st century activities there's no correct answer but the mechanism that the process that, that people go through is perhaps more important um and this quotation here from Andrew Miller, um, he says, collaboration isn't just discussions, it's about creating, coming to consensus. And these are things that to some extent we can try to measure, we can kind of identify, yeah, okay, they did work together. He made sure that everybody spoke, they made notes. 
somebody drew a graph, a chart of reflecting their thinking, good process, good practice, not so much the result. Another way to think about uh, uh, assessing 21st century is self-assessment, simply saying to students, what did you do? Well, first of all, I spoke and I suggested this, and then she spoke and she suggested that, and then those two said we should do this. So we compared this with that, and we decided this was better because of this. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Because students are actually being asked to think about their processes of, of collaboration, of communication, the processes of critical thinking. They're asking, they're telling us what they did. I mean, obviously self-assessment is, is, can be biased, it's one-sided, it's, it's, not, it's not neutral, but it does give us a snapshot, doesn't it, of, of what went on in that, in, that, in that working group of students. Um, another thing might be to do might be just multiple choice. I don't know. It may just be, did you do this, this or this? We did this, but then with a justification question, we did this because of this. So multiple choice can be a way of helping us to understand the process. But if we add a justification question, we decided to do this, we talked about this because. So it's multiple choice plus, I'd call that sort of enhanced version of multiple choice. Um, so we've got peer assessment and description of processes, the idea of students describing each other, whatever, what other people did. And I like this idea of live describing. If you have a group of say six students, you have five of them working together, and one of them is an observer and a describer. The describer says, now they're talking about this. First of all, they assess that. Now they're moving on to assess this and they're comparing it with that. That's interesting, a live description of the process as well. And the other thing, of course, is, is, is teacher observation, um, where the teacher sits and watches. You may just be thinking about the process. You may be thinking about the language, or you may be thinking about the language and the process. But sitting and watching a group working, or from a distance watching a group working, will tell you to what extent they are applying 21st century skills, good practice. An example here, you see, you would have uh, a problem solving activity. So what the one of the students would, would report, we looked at this, we did this, we did this, we did this, uh, explaining what they did. And the teacher might push a little bit more, say, why didn't you do this? But don't you think about what, what, don't you think that's important? Or maybe you should have to also inspire discussion. It's just a way, as I say, of getting the snapshot of how the group worked together. Yeah, we can quantify things to some extent. We could have a, a checklist of some kind. Did they do this? Did they do this? Did they do this? The same way as when we observe uh, for language, teachers can have a checklist. Uh, but it's very hard to be quantified, these skills are not easily quantifiable, but we can have a checklist when we observe perhaps. And there's just a couple of, of, of examples here, um, awarding marks, for example, this is uh, in critical thinking uh, for numbers of bias that they, somebody finds. Uh, so there's some bias there, there's some bias here, some bias there, helps to understand critical thinking. And here we have again, a suggestion of observing an activity. I'll leave that there for a second for you to have a look at. Activity four is a formative assessment activity. There's another one there. As I said before, having an observer and a describer and describer and a writer who describe to you what happened in the activity. It's the approach that I mentioned before. It's certainly not always clear whether assessment is practical or whether it's desirable. Um, my sense is that we can't teach 21st century skills without some degree of formative assessment. We need to have some understanding of what is happening, whether students are applying 21st century good, good practice, 
21st century skills good practice yes we need that formative assessment but anything more than that anything with with benchmarking anything that is comparative i'm very uncertain about because i don't see how we can quantify many of the 21st century activities what well, now the second issue area which is which is cultural political educational challenges um these cultural issues have two aspects issues of national culture and politics and issues of local learning traditions and cultures and i want to look at those one by one the problem with culture of course is it's very close to our hearts and um politics and culture are all caught up and we're very uh, we easily take offense about our culture if somebody says to you british people you're always abc i mean oh wait a minute you can't say that even if i know they're not trying to offend me and it does have an impact on 21st century skills um these areas in particular critical thinking information media and technology skills and citizenship and global issues i think do have an impact and we need we need to look at them a little bit um critical thinking well one of the problems with critical thinking is that some people feel it's challenging status quo it's challenging the government um so therefore they avoid it that is not what critical thinking about is about is, is about at all um it may not be common in certain cultures in sweden scandinavia critical thinking is taught in schools in the uk it's taught in some schools as a subject in others it isn't um but i think the concerns that some teachers have about critical thinking that it's somehow political are not valid i think it's just a lack of experience from that teacher or that institution and a lack of understanding as what as to what exactly critical thinking really is so um it doesn't concern me too much um information media and technology skills can create some challenges things like internet censorship press censorship bias and transparency fake news these are all the things that we explore and they can be seen as difficult or awkward in certain societies in certain cultures and therefore teachers need to be cautious because information media and technology skills is about that it's about understanding why this person writes something puts it online do they have a what's driving them is it money is it politics what's the reason for them writing the article writing the text so it can have a, a degree of political um undertone that teachers need to be aware of i think and citizenship covers all sorts of areas uh, human rights gender religious freedoms and they can be controversial so again teachers need to steer their way around that in the way that only a local teacher knows i trust local teachers to know ways of managing things experienced local teachers know that very well so um citizenship i think needs to be embraced needs to be discussed but as i say in certain cultures people need to find a way around it that's absolutely fine i think um so a few ideas um local knowledge and understanding yes of course and that's what teachers have stakeholder engagement once schools inspectors ministries understand what 21st century skills are what critical thinking is what uh, media skills are they be okay that's fine it, it, it's not a problem professional development we need to empower teachers to uh by helping them to understand the expectations what are 21st century schools what is critical thinking what is collaboration so professional development um neutral topics yes in principle neutral topics are a good idea um but of course the question what is what is neutrality what is neutral for one person it's not neutral for somebody else and the other problem i suppose is neutral topics are often quite dull not very exciting and don't always motivate people so um i think big topics abstract topics are good because they can't be seen as any political issues around them at all and i would say very local or very global topics so either make something very global or very local and i've got an example there about improving public transport it's not particularly controversial but it will have a strong connection for students and will engage students doing some critical thinking well we can have more buses at this time of the day or maybe if we took funding from here we could have money to build a metro system or tram system um these are local or national topic uh, lo local topics not national topics so i think that's a good way to manage any controversy around the 21st century skills particularly critical thinking um and i also think 
the good thing about local topics is students tend to have an effective or emotional engagement with them. They're interested in it, it means something, it has a connection to them, authenticity. Students have to get buses to school every day. If the buses are crowded or late or dirty, it matters to them. If they can have more buses or they can have newer buses or trams or something, they'll engage with that. Um, so we can make 21st century schools very highly learner-led and thus engaging. And I've got an example here um, about uh, environmental, on the environmental side, uh, a carbon footprint calculator. And they can, students can calculate their environmental footprint from their household. It's nothing to do with, with, with global or national, it's their personal footprint and they can, they can do it online. And these kinds of things, effectively local issues, I think are very sensible. Um, some educational policies and traditions can somehow seem to conflict with, with 21st century skills. Um, Memorization, cultures where memorization and what we call teaching to the test, I think, the tendency is for teachers to encourage students to guess what the questions will be, memorize the answers and write the answers down. That is the antithesis, the exact opposite of 21st century skills where we want to see creativity, innovation, critical thinking. So sometimes there can be, it can be difficult to get that fit between a local educational culture and 21st century skills. Uh, so I think that's quite important. And part of that, um, also coming from local culture, 21st century skills, communication particularly, often requires, as I said before, people to stand up and speak to the class. It's a fear of public performance, sense of face, you know, well, I can't do that. No, 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 I'm, people might laugh at me or, or natural modesty can be issues there. Um, Perceptions of teacher roles in certain cultures are, are, are very teacher centric. The teacher is quite dominant, can't be challenged easily. Again, that is the antithesis of 21st century skills. 21st century skills is about challenging people and sometimes it's about challenging the teacher. I think a good teacher teaching 21st century skills will, will want to be challenged and maybe sometimes deliberately make statements that will be challenged because they want the students to engage. Cultures with regular testing, again, may find it make it find it difficult to make that fit with the 21st century skills culture um, so I think the short-term approach is is, is is around teacher education and education of academic managers and 21st century skills work best in an institution when the management of the institution we to use the same word buy-in where they accept and endorse the teaching of 21st century skills. This is becoming more and more common around the world, but the short-term solution I think is teacher education and getting management support through, through the ministry, through the, through the school board, through, through, through the school director, wh wh whatever structural network you have. Uh, the references are there and uh, I'll make sure that you get copies of the slides so you, you, you can find those sources. Um, that's all I have to say. I will be available hopefully for the face-to-face -face session, the uh, uh, question and answer session in a few days. Uh, hopefully I'll be there. Um, but equally, if you do have any questions, you'll find my uh, website underneath there. There's a contact me form on the website. Feel free to drop me a message and I'll be delighted to, to get in touch and engage with you. Thank you very much for your time and hope you enjoy your conference. Thank you. Mr. Graham has explored two key elements in the integration of the 21st century, namely the integration of 21st century skills in our work and some key challenges, namely related to assessment and the cultural relevance and acceptability of some aspects of the 21st century skills in certain settings. Once again, thank you very much, Mr. Christopher Graham for such a practical session. Ladies and gentlemen, Next in the program is the presentation of e-posters. I hand over the session to our lovely moderators to walk us through the presentations. Thank you.